Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to Raven67854 Gaming and welcome back to another Godot tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Movie Maker. Now, at the time of this recording, it was literally just added, uh, like I think a few days ago, and the latest Alpha, Alpha 11, uh, just so happens to have added this feature in. So we're going to take a look at it. So first, what is Movie Maker? Well, Movie Maker allows you to save out either a series of PNGs or AVIs, and basically it allows you to um, create cutscenes. You can make machinima with it. But basically, it is frame rate independent. I put that in quotes because, one, it will slow down uh, quite heavily uh, when you're recording, and also it doesn't care at all about frame rate. It'll just keep capturing each frame individually until you tell it to stop. Okay, so uh, let's let's first look at the options and how to enable it. So it's really simple. You go up here to Project, you go to Project Settings, you go down to Movie Maker, and all you really have to do to enable it from this point on is this button over here. But we do need to check some things. So first off, we're going to add our movie file, and I'm just going to save it in the root of my... Godot projects folder and I already have a physics AVI file. Actually, you know what? Let me show you that really quick. So you can kind of see like the sort of thing you can do with it. And it would probably help, by the way, if I'd put it on the right monitor. Roll it back. So that was created inside of Godot. And this video will also be on YouTube. I'm not sure if it'll be up before or after this video, but you'll be able to look at it on YouTube. I have to do a bit more tweaking. Anyway, the point is we'll put it in here and we'll just save it as a AVI file. Um, if you want to save it out as PNGs, it'll basically save every frame as a PNG. And you can use something like FFmpeg or virtual dub to put it all together and spit it out as an MP4, an API, uh, AV1, pretty much however you wish to convert it and save it to. Uh, but we're just going to use AVI because it's relatively simple uh, by comparison. And then we'll just hit save. Okay, and then this up here, this is the quality uh, that the AVI files, uh, like each frame will be. Uh, I'm going to set it to 0.9 because that's a pretty high quality uh, JPEG. Anything after 0.9 is just a waste of space. And you can also set the frame rate. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to set the window resolution. So I'm going to set it to 1080p. So I'm going to do 1920 by 1080. And you'll find this right here, as I, as you saw, display, window. And then you want to just change the viewport uh, width and height. And this is the only thing I'm really going to change because, again, it's going to be, well, with this scene we're going to do, it's going to be playable. But depending on the scene, it might not be very playable and so it really doesn't really matter what it's running at. Whether it's, you know, full screen or not, it just needs to play out and then you tell it to exit. So we're just going to hit close right here. And now we're just going to make a really basic scene. Um, so we're just going to make a 3D scene. I'm just going to call it uh, World. That's fine. And then I am going to throw in a new world environment. I'm going to select over here, new environment. And then I'm just going to set up, it's just going to be very basic, very bare bones, new sky here. And we're just clicking in here to open up this panel. And we'll do a new physical sky. And then for the tone map, I like filmic. And I'm going to turn on SSR. Oh, sorry. I meant SSAO. I don't want screen space reflections. And SSIL. We'll also turn on SDFGI, use occlusion. And we'll just crank it up. Why not eight cascades? Never hurt anybody. Okay, so you can you can either skip all of this or set it to pretty much whatever you like. You know, this is just for the sake of this uh, video here. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mesh instance. So we're just going to create a simple scene where some cubes just fall down and then just land and then kind of like what you saw in the video uh, that I had previously done. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to make a new box mesh. And I'm just going to set the size to, say, 15 by 15. And I'll just keep it 
the default. Actually, I think I might add a standard material here. And then I think I'll just drag this down just to make it a little darker. Okay, perfect. I'm also going to go up to view and I'm going to turn off the origin and the grid because it's annoying me. And I'm just going to rename this to floor. And then I'm going to go up here to mesh. I'm going to click create trimatic static mesh body. And normally I would optimize this to make it a box and stuff, but for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to. And now I'm going to go up to here to world and I'm going to add a brand new mesh instance. And I'm also going to add a rigid body dynamic, uh, rigid dynamic body 3D. I'm going to throw the, um, the mesh in here and then I'm going to call this uh, falling cube. And then I'm going to add in a collision shape 3D. And then we're just going to give it a box and then under our mesh, we're going to give it a box as well. Then we're going to select our rigid body here. And we're just going to drag it up one. Then we're going to go back to our uh, mesh instance. And I'm just going to give it a standard 3D material and make it any color you want. I'm just going to make it a blue. I like that blue. Looks very nice. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the mass at 25. And now I am just going to duplicate this a couple times. Like I said, this is just going to be a uh, very, very basic. And then I'm just going to collapse all of these here. And then I'm going to select them all. And we're just going to control D duplicate up ever so slightly. And then I'm going to go all the way down to here and all the way up and select the first one. And then I'm just going to move it up just a little bit slightly so it falls straight down. Okay. I think another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a new node and I'm going to call it uh, cubes. And then I'm just going to drag all of these into here up to here and then i'm gonna collapse that okay now what we need is we need a light because if we were to run this right now we wouldn't have a light so I'm just gonna grab a light really quick and i will turn on shadows and this is the directional light so it'll function you know quite like a sun and we'll just drag this down and move it on over just like that so we have a yeah you know, a little bit of uh just a little bit of um you know a little bit of an angle there and now I'm going to add a new camera. And I'm going to hold control and hit two to split the viewport. And I'm going to select preview. And I'm just going to move this back until we can kind of see our little scene here. And then I'm just going to rotate the camera down at a slight angle. And yeah, that looks fun. Okay, so what we could do is we could go through and, you know, make this look really, really like just fancy and stuff like that but we're not going to do that so but what I, I am going to do is go back to projects i'm going to go back to 3d and the default physics engine is bullet and the other one is the new godot 3d i am going to crank the solver up to actually i'll just leave the solver at 16 uh, but i'm going to go to common here and for physics tick per second i'm going to set this to 300 and if i recall I'll just leave this rest of this is fine. This is just a small scene. And now we're just going to save it. I'm going to save it in scenes here. And I'm going to call this Movie Maker. And save. And now what we're going to do is we are going to click this option right here. And that will, you know, enable Movie Maker mode. And then I am going to click Play Scene. And it's going to compile and run. And then it's going to launch. And you can see it falls down. And now they're ever so slightly falling over. Okay. Not a uh, not a personal big fan of uh, the way that fell. <laughs> so I'm just going to control D and then just drag that up. And then I'll just collapse that again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Wanted to move the... I wanted to move the camera up. Okay. So now we'll try that again. Trying to get it to look a little bit better than that. Okay, so now they're going to fall. And then 
ever so slowly just fall over. And you can see it's running. It it would actually run significantly faster if we weren't in movie maker mode. Uh, this scene would work just fine. And it actually looks pretty good. I mean, obviously, we didn't turn on anti-aliasing or anything like that. Um, but now what we can do is we can do a lovely Alt F4. And it will save the scene. Now, one thing that we did not do is under Movie Maker, uh, I neglected to add a file name. So uh, we can call this Movie Maker and then hit save and it'll save it out. Uh, but that's okay because it can run without a file name anyway. And you can see it's perfectly smooth, running at a solid 60 FPS. And there you have it. That's it. That's literally all it is to it. Um, it's very basic, very simple, and it's 97 megabytes, by the way. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's wonderful. This this is an amazing feature, and I'm fairly certain that they will continue to develop and improve the tools for this. Uh, I have no doubt and yeah, like I like I was saying, it is truly a remarkable uh, feature. Like this, this is. I don't want to go like you know too hyperbole and say it's a game changer, but it kind of is because it's very easy to use. All you do is turn it on. You can you can make cutscenes with it. You can make machinima with it. You can make giant mass physics rigid body simulations with it, and then render it out. And it's you know you don't have to mess with Blender and all that sort of stuff. Won't look as nice, but it'll still look pretty good. So yeah, I mean this, like I said, this is this is a wonderful tool. Uh, I really, really, really like it. Um, so thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, check the description, join Discord, or post you know down below. Um, and if you'd like to support this channel and get access to all my videos early, uh, you can do so by um, clicking that member button and joining. And yeah, like I said, you get access to member exclusive videos and also get all my videos early. So with that, have a lovely day, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.